Hi friend, Lisa Thompson from our Bayside Granite Bay campus. So years ago, I was in a real sign phase. If you've ever been to Hobby Lobby, our home was like Lisa Lobby. I literally had words that described every room of our house, laundry room, kitchen, eat, and yes, even our bathroom had a sign in it. But I also had signs that reminded me of God and what it looks like to walk daily in a relationship with Him through faith. Words like believe and trust, love one another, be joyful, got patience. I remember my husband telling me one day he felt like he was taking one big guilt trip walking from our bedroom to the kitchen because he lacked some of the things he was being reminded of. Clearly that was not the point of my signs, but it is the point Paul is writing in chapter 13 to the church in Corinth. He is reminding them of the most important sign they have missed when it comes to living their Christian life out. The Corinthians practiced spiritual gifts, but not in a manner that unified or edified the entire body. Many were using their gifts for their glory, and they actually thought that they would matter in heaven one day. And this demonstration of their gifts revealed the spiritual pride and what they were lacking most. The Bible is very clear that love is more significant in the life of a believer than giftedness will ever be. But the two are not mutually exclusive, and Paul is emphasizing the focus and goal of the gifts is love, not the gifts for their own sake. So Paul is correcting their thinking by summarizing this entire chapter by telling them, hey, you can't take your gifts to heaven. These gifts are for this world as we build the church together to live out the mission of the gospel in God's kingdom on earth. But for God's eternal kingdom, you can only pack three things. And I want to talk to you real quick about the first thing. It says in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now these th three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The three pursuits of our Christian life are not the miracles and the powers and the gift. They are faith, hope, and love. And while these gifts are precious and given by the Holy Spirit today, they were never meant to be the focus and goal of our Christian life. So Paul is making that distinction between the faith we live out in this temporary world and the faith that we're going to live in eternity. Faith that will continue on well after our spiritual gifts has passed on earth. They never end. Faith is what makes it possible for us to come into a relationship with God in the first place. It's a sign that we have put our trust in God, and it's what we build on earth to build up heaven. It's the legacy we leave behind that testifies to this world there is a future life in eternity for all who put their faith in Jesus Christ. Everyone has faith. It's either faith in this world or faith in a world that awaits us in heaven one day. And whatever we prioritize and are driven by in this life will show the kind of faith we lived out on earth. Hebrews 11:6 says that without faith, no one can please God. Anyone who comes to God must believe that he is real and that he rewards those who truly want to find him. At the end of this life, we're all gonna stand before Jesus and he's gonna ask us, what did you do with what faith I gave you? How did you steward your gifts and your time, your treasure and the resources? How did you invest in this life to build up the kingdom, not your kingdom? We can't pack and take those things that we have built for ourselves, but we can pack our faith and spend eternity experiencing the rewards and the impact that our faith had on other people that are in heaven because of you. It's always good for us to do a little inventory and ask ourselves, what is our Christian life focused on? And what do you really want more of in this season? And it really should all come back to faith, hope, and love. And if it doesn't right now, Let's pray that God would give us the faith required to prioritize what matters most in our lifetime.